and welcome. In my last video, I talked about our second week of development of embryonic period of life. In that video, I talked to you about that how the blastocyst has two parts: embryoblast divided into epiblast, hypoblast, and the trophoblast is divided into cytotrophoblast and sensitive trophoblast. Also, formation of lacunar stage, then formation of primary villi, formation of amniotic cavity, formation of housel membrane. Then you're gonna find primitive yolk sac. Then secondary yolk sac, uterocentral circulation, then formation of amnion, chorion, and up to the connecting stock. Okay, so up to this much our second week has done. So today's topic is our third week of development in embryonic period of life. From the sensitive trophoblast, a very very special hormone generates is known as beta human chorionic gonadotrophin. Our shortcut is known, is known as beta HCG. Well, this hormone is very very powerful. First of all, it helps to stop the menstruation cycle or period in women, I mean in the pregnant women. Then, second of all, it helps to creation or the formation of the process of gastrulation and neurulation. First of all, I will talk about gastrulation. Okay, it is a little bit complicated. Try to understand. Gastrulation begins with the formation of primitive streak. Okay, as you can see in this photo, few cell from the epiblast accumulates in the dorsal surface of the embryonic disc mainly at the caudal end okay I mean at the lower part in the caudal end in the midline and the formation of this structure is initially it is oval and after that I mean after a few hours it starts elongation so it becomes almost a stick like structure I mean oval almost a vertical stick like structure which has two end one is cephalic end caudal end cephalic means upper end caudal means lower end now at the cephalic end of this primitive streak you're gonna find a primitive node and in this primitive node you're gonna find a small pit is known as primitive pit so this primitive node is also known as Hansen's node and the primitive pit is known as blastospore now this primitive streak actually helps to formation of the axis of our body and through this axis we can identify or we can declare that this part is medial this part is lateral okay this part is anterior I mean the ventral this part is posterior I mean the dorsal then this part is cranial, this part is caudal. Mechanic of the primitive streak hai, wo ultimately kya karta hai, humare shri ka jo matlab bhrun hai, is ke andar axis formation karta hai. Axis matlab jis ke zariye hum keh paate hai ke ye side medial hai, wo side lateral hai, ye wala samne ka hissa hai, wo wala piche ka hissa hai, ye wala upar ka hissa hai, ye wala niche ka hissa hai. Matlab ek central center point, okay? Few cells from the epiblast migrates towards the primitive streak. Now on this migration process, the few cells from the epiblast displaces or replaces all the cells of the hypoblast and there these epiblast cells are converted into endoderm now few cells from the epiblast again goes towards the newly formed endoderm and few cells from the endoderm combines together and ultimately forms mesoderm and remaining cells of the epiblast converted into ectoderm ultimately we are getting three germ layers First of all, endoderm, then mesoderm, and then ectoderm. Among these three germ layer, only mesoderm is extremely active. Okay, at the cephalic end and the caudal end, this mesoderm, along with this ectoderm and endoderm, forms a bilaminar disc. I mean, it's a circular disc formation, as you can see in this photo. The disc of the upper part of the cephalic end ultimately forms buccopharyngeal membrane or oropharyngeal membrane. And at the caudal end, it ultimately forms cloacal membrane. So up to this much is part A. In my next video, I will talk about part B. So till then, bye.